Nice. We've got a new champion, Hendrikus Duplessis. I'm curious, did you have him winning that fight? It was a very close fight, and did you have him on the scorecards winning? It's funny. I was. We were just looking at the at how the media had scored it, and uh, right down the middle, I had it uh, two to two going into the last round, and I thought uh, Strickland won the last round. Mm -hmm. um, guys who were sitting at the same table had it the other way, and uh, you know it was a close fight. Str I thought Strickland looked great in the first two rounds. I mean, the jab was fucking beautiful. You don't see jabs like that in MMA. And, and, and the jab did what they're supposed to do. Both of his eyes were swollen shut. Um, he slowed down in the third and fourth. Du du uh, Duplessis kept coming forward, uh, you know, then started mixing up takedowns and, and punches. And, and uh, I had it uh, even going to the fifth round. I'm like, this is the round. See who wants it. And they both started to turn it up a little bit. Just, it's just one of those tight fights. But I'm also one of these guys, I believe you have to take it from the champion. So, Sean, Sean Strickland is an interesting thing, right? Like Some of the things he says piss a lot of people off. I'm sure it can't be great for sponsors, but clearly this week he has become a massive star for the UFC. So with that in mind, do you want to give him an immediate rematch because it was such a close fight, or what do you want to do with Sean next? I don't, I don't know. I mean, eventually these two are going to end up fighting again, I'm sure. But we're not thinking about an immediate re rematch right now. Okay. Drikas did call for Israel Adesanya. I know that everyone asks you about the UFC 300 main event every day at this point, I'm sure. But is that something that could potentially happen? At I'll time? have UFC's main event. I mean, uh, 300's main event for you soon. Give us a hint. Huh? Give me a hint. No. no. Okay. <laughs> uh, new champion for the women's bantamweight division. Raquel got the job done tonight. What did you think of their fight? Yeah. I, I, you know, I've been close to Raquel for a long time, probably 10 years. And one of the things that, there's many things I love about Raquel. One of the things that drives me crazy about Raquel is she does not listen to her corner ever. She literally never listens to her corner. It's, it's amazing. She keeps winning. You stay in the middle of that octagon and you throw. You let your hands go. You don't get into the clinch with, uh, with uh, Myra. You know, it's just, but she won. I'm happy for her. She's been, at, she's been at this for a long time. She's had a lot of ups and downs. She's stuck it out. And she's a world champion now. You mentioned, the, you said before, like one of the best things about your job is getting to put the belt around people's waists when they have been fighting for it for a long time. With her, she's been doing this forever. Is it just a nice thing? Yeah, yeah, and, and we're super close. So, yeah, to, to see her win a world title and, uh, you know, yeah, it's awesome. Two more for me. Duplessis, obviously South African. I know UFC Africa is something you've wanted to do forever. Could he be the guy that takes you there? Absolutely, positively can be the guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and last one outside the, tonight's event, there was reports that the Saudi event's been pushed back to June. I'm curious if that's true. And what about the reports where it was because of a disagreement over the card? Total bullshit. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a straight out fucking lie. Um, I don't know who started it or how it started, but not one fight was announced to Saudi. Not one fight was announced to them. Uh, I called and asked to push the card back. Yeah, because we had a couple of guys that we want on the card and they, they weren't ready. So, listen, you know how, how we are. We want to deliver. And if we're going to Saudi Arabia at the level that these guys do things, and it's a fight night, but we want to make it the best fight night we've ever done. So um, anybody who came out and said it was because the card wasn't good is a fucking liar. So our Evoilov against Arnold Allen, that fight? Mom. Oh, 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 I thought you were talking about Neil Magny. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, what's his win streak like? He's on. I think he's like 18, 19. Yeah, 18 or 19. And yeah, that place sucked the wind right out of the fucking. That fight sucked the wind right out of the arena tonight. So it might bum him out, but he's got to deal with it. Yeah, that was the least fun fight anybody's ever seen. So I, he doesn't have much to complain about. You know who lost that fight? The fans. Yeah. So yeah, he doesn't have much to, to bitch about on that one. And last one for me, uh, one last thing on the, the Saudi card. Uh, the people that were putting on that show said that they had requested Connor headline that card. Is that even a possibility? <laughs> no. Okay. no. Hey, Dana, over here. But I love it, though. You know what the thing is with, with, with Saudi Arabia? These guys are like, uh, yeah, bring us the best you got, and we'll pay for it, and we'll do this, and we'll do that. We, we, it's, it, it, for us, it's, it's not about the money or any of that stuff. We always want to put on the best possible card that we can. Um, you know, we've been that way since day one. And, and when you're going to a place like Saudi Arabia that does it at a level that they do it, we want, we want to deliver. 
Raquel Pennington was saying kind of all week that this fight was originally supposed to be her and Juliana Pena, and we know Juliana was injured. She called her out in the cage saying this is the fight she's wanted since the Ultimate Fighter 10 years ago. Uh, is it a pretty safe bet if Juliana gets healthy, that's the direction to go for her first style defense? Yeah, could happen, yeah. I mean, I, I, sitting right here now, I don't know what Juliana's situation is, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're eventually going to fight. Yeah. And as far as the middleweight title, you have Hamzat Chemaev out there tweeting to Drikas right now saying, see you at UFC 300. We know Drikas versus Adesanya is a huge fight too. What is going to be the process you guys take in figuring out what Drikas's next title defense will be? Because those are obviously both huge fights. We'll figure this out Tuesday. We'll probably announce it next week. Okay. Do you know if, what Izzy's availability is? Is he trying to fight again this year? Do I know... Israel Adesanya, like, is he looking to come back sooner than later? Do you know? We'll find out next week. Okay, thank you. Okay. Dana, I yeah. just want to go back. Um, you were talking about, like, you obviously give a long leash to your fighters about, you know, what they can say when they are up there with a UFC microphone and you are getting into territory of homophobia, transphobia. Like, is there... I don't give anybody a leash. Well, I'm saying you... A leash? I'm... St like Free speech. And control when, what people say, gonna tell people what to believe, gonna tell people. I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no leashes on any of them. What is your question? I was asking that question. I'll move on though. Yeah, uh, probably a good idea. You just, that's ridiculous to say I give somebody a leash. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want and they can believe whatever they want. If And I don't think there's any. We had, we, had, we had two gay women who fought in the co-main event. They sat on the stage with Sean Strickland. They could give a shit what Sean Strickland thinks or what he says or what his beliefs are, or what his opinions are. You know what I mean? So to have that belt sitting there knowing everything you've been through, what does it feel like? It's still, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. It's been a long day, but uh, it's surreal. Um, you know, it's 14 years of hard work coming together. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to take it all in. Um, when did you feel the tide really turned in your favor in that fight? Obviously, you probably knew she was going to start strong, and maybe you would be able to break her down and do that over the course of the rounds. Did it kind of play out as you hoped and expected in that sense, or was there maybe some surprises in the momentum shifts of the fight? Um, you know, I think for me, obviously, I'm my biggest critic, so I wanted a different, like, a totally different fight for myself for a world title fight. But you know, there's a lot of good things to come out of that, and. I think everybody knows with me, like, I have cardio for days, and so as the rounds go on, like, that's my strength. Um, but it, it was, I don't know. I walked out, and I was extremely calm, and I was like, this is really weird. Um, and so I felt like I started a little slow in the first round and kind of just adjusting to everything, but it worked out in my favor. Yeah. Um I mean, going through a fight like that, Dana was in here and he said, you know, he, he loves you. We know you guys have like a, a long relationship and history together, but he said it drives him crazy that you never listen to your corner. Um, were you not listening as much as you wanted in that fight or what's kind of your reaction to that statement from him? Um, well, my corners were yelling at me to let my hands go. And Dana has told me since the ultimate fighter, like there's no reason I shouldn't be knocking people out. Um, so yeah, he already found me and lectured me on that one and uh, yelled at me too that I drive him nuts and I should have let my hands go a lot more. So what do you change in that regard going forward? Because look where it's led you. I mean, you can't debate the results and doing whatever you're doing. So um, what do you kind of, what adjustments do you make? I'm constantly climbing mountains. I'm constantly growing. And so one thing for me is, you know, I learned a lot um, on this journey back to the world title and being here and even some of the struggles that I've had to overcome this week and, you know, I mean, I believe, like, I freaking did it after 14 years of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. And so there's no more question. I go back, and now, you know, I sit here and preach all the time about having fun. It's time to really have fun, to truly just believe in every single aspect. And uh, tonight when I was dropping some bombs, like, I seen it written across all her face. And it was just like, all right, okay, here it is. And so... Yeah, I mean, I think that's the goal for myself coming out is, uh, you know, let them fly.
And just last thing for me, um, you called out Juliana Pena in the cage, which Dana was here. He said that seems to be likely the fight based on her health. Um, for people who maybe aren't aware of the history between you two, can you kind of explain a little bit and I guess what beating her in your first title defense would mean to you? Yeah, um, I mean, that's the fight that makes sense. I honestly thought for the world title it would be me and Juliana, but she's still injured. Uh, that relationship just goes back to 2013 when we were both on The Ultimate Fighter. Um, let's just say I learned Juliana's personality then, and um, it's kind of one of those ones that you're your own person, you stay your way and I'll stay mine, but you get under my damn skin, and I've been waiting for that fight for 13 years, whether the title's on the line or not. Um, Misha Tate, a uh, past opponent of yours, your coach uh, on The Ultimate Fighter, I know it seems like a lifetime ago now, but uh, she praised you guys on social media, she, she thought you guys had a great fight. What does it mean, in, you know, hearing about her support and, and other p of your peers who probably sent you uh, positive messages after the fight? It's absolutely awesome, you know, I mean, we're all out here, we're grinding and we're working hard. Um, you're going to have those athletes who they talk their crap and stuff, but, you know, Misha, I mean, she's one of the pioneers of the sport and I remember when I fought her um, back in 2016 now um, at Madison Square Garden. Um, after that whole fight, uh, you know, we hugged it out and everything and she told me one day I would be a world champion and like, those are honestly words that I held very close, like, she's done a lot of things for the sport, so to see where my career's grown to and like all the things I'm starting to accomplish and have accomplished, like it means everything. First of all, congratulations on the win. Um, great fight. Uh, talk to us about the emotions of actually having that belt in front of you, winning the world title and becoming champion. Wow, I mean, let's just talk about the emotions I felt when we started hearing one judge, one judge, and now I go, oh shit. Because I honestly thought I did enough until they st but it was a close fight, I'd make no mistake. But I thought I had it. And then when that split decision came, I just went, okay, this is 100% 50-50. And when they said and knew, it was, it felt like 15 years of work, of dreaming, of sacrificing, of everything came together in one single sentence. It was, it's incredible. It feels surreal, it's, it's amazing. The fight itself, right, it was very close. You know, some people are going to have it for him, some are going to have it for you. You are satisfied with your performance and you do feel like you did enough to win the fight? Yeah, I thought I did enough to win the fight. Um, it was definitely a close fight. I definitely gave him the first round and I made the necessary adjustments to, um, you know, in the fifth round, I wouldn't give him the round. I thought, thought at the end, I don't know how they scored it, to be honest. Um, listen, it was a close fight, I'm not going to lie. It was one of those fights where yeah, it, there wasn't even time to really think of what is happening. But I do believe with the takedowns that I got, it was very back and forth with the striking. Um, one for him, one for me. And uh, I tried to um, stay ahead with the takedowns. By round four and five, he did a good job of defending those. But obviously, my takedowns got a bit sloppy. And he, he started you know, reading them. But those takedowns weren't really for getting a takedown. They were more to disrupt his game plan. But at the end of the day, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, well, self-proclaimed, and some people think, best boxer in the UFC. Yeah. I want to talk about his boxing, right? Everyone knows that he's a good boxer. But when you're in there and you're dealing with that jab, especially in the earlier part of the fight, are you thinking to yourself, oh, yeah, he is as good as they say? Yeah. Yeah, no, listen, he is good. He's definitely good. Uh, he caught me in the first round. Um, with the jab, and then I realized I can't let him get away with that jab, because my game plan was obviously, first two rounds our plan was 100% to fight his fight, not to go out and fight the way that I fight. You'll see how the fight changed from the third round. I, tr I went more to my style, but that was our game plan. For the first two rounds, he jabs, I jab, one, twos, nothing serious, and then from round number three, we start turning it up, and uh, obviously, I had a lot of people to prove wrong with my gas tank, and I believe I did that tonight. You called for Israel after the fight. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about how the, the result of this fight might have effects on UFC 300. I mean, I can see your face. You're wearing a little bit of damage. Do you think you could turn around that quick? And if not, is Israel still the guy that you'd like to fight? A little bit of damage. Do, do you remember how handsome I was before this fight? <laughs> I look like a cauliflower now. But uh, yeah, I mean... I'm pretty banged up right now. I don't feel like, listen, I'm, I'm up for another round if they want to go um, right now. But 
Yeah, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but UC 300 sounds amazing. And just to be for the last one, Israel Adesanya is the guy you want, right? There's still some p personal issues there that you'd like to resolve, and you think that sort of fight is the one that's perfect for your first title defense? Oh, no, it's nothing personal. It's not personal at all. That's just the fight the fans want to see. Uh, I want to fight the best competition. There's a lot of guys that are going to be fighting, but the fans want to see Israel Adesanya versus Rikis Duplessis. You know, there's a lot of hype that was already built on it. If the fans go, if there's some way they start tracking and saying, listen, the fans don't really want to see Adesanya versus DBC, we don't do that fight. Makes, it's fine to me. I, have, I don't care who it is. But that's just a fight on top of my head that I think the people want to see, and that's going to you know, get a lot of people excited. Right here. Uh, Sean just tweeted saying that uh, he, he was referencing a headbutt in the fight, made it difficult to see, but he did give you congratulations and props on the fight. Did you notice any headbutt in there from either you or him? No, 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 no. I can't say that I had. I can't say that I did. It's the first time hearing of it. No, I didn't feel a headbutt. Did he say I headbutted him? He said, uh, "This is him saying." He said, "Well, fuck, man, that headbutt really made it difficult to see, but I thought we got it. We." I thought we got the job job done on to the next one. Mm, no, I can't remember any head, but do I want double champ status? Absolutely. But I'm willing to, uh, to earn that. If there's contenders that make sense, I don't want to fight my uh, um, contenders that doesn't make sense. You know, fighting Israel Adesanya makes sense. Fighting guys that deserve the title shots makes sense. But I don't want to just fight somebody because I don't want to be Israel the signer that fought Sean Strickland. Yeah, Strickland won that fight, but they should have never fought, in my opinion. When you say uh, contenders that don't make sense, do you ref mean fighters like Hamzat who maybe haven't fought a middleweight ranks because he's also tweeting like, see you soon and referencing UFC 300? Yeah, but he said that to John Jones. So, I mean, who takes that guy seriously anyway? And see out of it, but was there any issue, visibility issues, and was there a concern in the corner that it could get worse? Yeah, I mean, uh, kudos to, 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 the, uh, to the cut man on that. Uh, he hit me with a jab in the first. I didn't feel it really. I could feel he got me, and um, all of a sudden, I just felt this thing in my eye, but it didn't hurt, and his, co his corner screamed and said, he's already bleeding, and I thought, shit, am I, am I really bleeding? And then... In the second, he caught me when on this eye again, I think. And all of a sudden, this eye went completely shut. Like, I couldn't see, and I was like, ah, oh, come on. One eye. And that was the first time for me in a fight where my eye was completely shut for a while. Like, I couldn't see. And uh, then I went to, back to the corner. They put the ice thing on it. And uh, it, the swelling went down immediately. So, good as to the, to the cut man, it helped a lot. And then I, I cut him. We spoke about it uh, in the doctor's rooms. And I caught him with a big punch, and uh, his eyes started bleeding. And I looked at the blood flowing, and I said, oh, I hope that goes into his eyes. <laughs> and he said, and I look at him, and I'm like, that has to be in your eyes. Come on. And he went like this. And I said, gotcha. And he tried not to. He said he tried not to wipe, so I can't see it's in his eyes. But then he started wiping, and I was like, yeah, well, the, now we're level. Now we're level. And I started, yeah, so, I mean, but all in all, I mean, Sean Strickland's an absolute warrior and world respect for him.